nothing muted about Filipino food. It hits the salty, sweet, sour flavor spectrum like a freight train. Across 7,000 islands, here's a mix of Spanish, Malaysian, Chinese, and even American cuisine. Welcome to the full-on world of Filipino food. Join our food safari to learn how to make the national dish adobo, a seriously good noodle stir-fry. Join a lechon feast for the best spit roast, pinati kare kare, a colourful girly lunch and the ice dessert halo halo. Filipino food is like a melting pot of different cultures and we've taken all of those flavours and we've developed this fabulous cuisine that is Filipino. And made yeah. it better. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> um, a lot of tangy different flavours in there, a lot of robust colours, a lot of really strong indicative flavours of the, the Philippines. I'm so excited to be cooking Filipino food in, in the restaurant now and I think people are looking for something different and people are excited about the different flavours that are coming through because I've never had it before. Dennis Leslie grew up eating traditional Filipino food at home and says being surrounded by a food-loving family inspired him to become a chef. He's executive chef at Adelaide's Hilton Hotel, as familiar with fine dining as with the diverse ingredients from the Philippines. Every Filipino kitchen will have um, cane vinegar. This is used for adobo, and it's also used as a dipper in other foods as well. Yeah, without this, um, you don't have Filipino food. Now, how different is this vinegar from a normal white vinegar? It's a lot more subtle in flavour, not mm. sweet. People seem to think it's a lot sweeter, but it's no added sugar and it's just cane vinegar. Not as um, sharp as uh, white wine vinegar. So most families would go through a bottle a week, would you? Or? Um, it depends how much adobo you make. <laughs> <laughs> OK, all right. <laughs> This is a bago ong, which is an ingredient that all Filipino knows and uses on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, what is it? It's a shrimp paste. It's a shrimp. It's fermented shrimp, and it has a really strong flavour and odour. So we mix it with cane vinegar, a little bit of chopped chilies, and that could be a, as a dipper. Yeah. And also um, in things like pinak bet, which is like a sort of stir-fry version of okra and um, mm. pumpkin. This is one of the um, ingredients that we use pretty well in everything. Filipino soy sauce is a little bit more thicker than normal soy sauces, um, a little bit more saltier and a lot darker. It so would give great colour to things. Absolutely, it? and it's used very much in adobo and also in lechon, in dipping sauces. This is a popular brand, is it? Makapina. Everyone knows that one. The really? pineapple That's brand. That's the one. Absolutely. Pineapple brand. Yeah. Um, we also use a lot of fish sauce in our cooking. Every um, Asian country has sort of like their favourite brand. This is the brand that I've always grown up with. Again, one of those ingredients that we use as a dipper or a side dish or as a main ingredient. Dennis, is Filipino cuisine hot? I think all kids at, at a very young age learn how to eat chilli yeah. um, and get used to it. So yeah, it, it can be very hot. It all depends on what we're cooking. Um, but usually the chilies that we that we use are the little bird's eye chilies. And we use these as a, as a condiment, usually chopped up in like bagaong or in the cane vinegar as a condiment or as a main part of the dish in, in cooking. And also other chilies like the banana chilies as well. Calamansi. Um, calamansi is great because we use it just about in everything. It's got a, it's a citrus. It's a citrus. It's a cross between a mandarin and um, a kumquat in flavour. It comes in orange or green. Usually used in um, like things like sisig, palabok. Best friends with palabok. So it's just a great cleanser for the dish. Purple yam or ube. It's an intense um, colour, isn't it's it? It's a brilliant colour. It's got a texture and a flavour that's really similar to sweet potato, but when treated right, it becomes really sweeter, and we use it in a lot of desserts. 
without rice, um, there is no Filipino food. <laughs> so it's it's pretty well eaten in in just about every single uh, meal period. Any leftover rice, we um, just toss it through um, a pan with some garlic. Oh, um, yum. So yeah. you never waste rice? Absolutely not. Um, every kid knows how to cook rice um, by the age of, you know, five or six. I mean, it certainly was one of our jobs to, to cook rice when That's we were growing up. a good start as a chef, isn't it? Yeah, I know. And look where it's taken us. Filipino food is so complex and delicious, but so little known that its devotees are keen to spread the word. Trissa Lopez is a banker who's a passionate cook in her spare time. She thinks nothing of preparing a home-style brunch for her cousin and friends from the bank. You need to try some of this. So this is ensaimada, which is a brioche, but on overdrive. So it's topped with melted butter, sprinkled with some sugar and some grated cheese on top. Mmm, Tris. Sounds really good. Trissa also created an online club with members from around the world who cook a dish each month, taking notes and photos ready to share on a blog. I really like it. So really the club started among um, a group of bloggers and we said we need to get the word out about how good Filipino food is. We started sharing our recipes, our family recipes, and you know, from a group of three people, we're now 50. One of her favourite recipes is a vegetable dish called pinak bet that she hated as a child and loves as an adult. So it's a vegetable stew, typically made with eggplant, snake beans, okra and bitter melon. The vegetables are stewed and steamed in their own juices. And then finally, it's topped with slices of this crispy pork belly. Beautiful. So lovely mix of textures and, and, and healthy flavors. too. And Wonderful. Most of it is healthy, and then you add the pork belly and everything goes to... <laughs> <laughs> Bitter melon is very much an acquired taste. You slice it and you scoop out the seeds and the pit. We just salt and we leave it for about 30 minutes to take some of that bitterness out. A little bit of oil. Just fetch your oil on. Yeah. And this is called the Holy Trinity of Philippine cooking. You've got some ginger, some red onion. Now, that's a large amount of garlic. A lot. We love our garlic. So every Filipino dish has a basis, something like this. Something like this, yeah. Most dishes do. Mm. As a kid, I thought whoever invented pinak bet must have hated children. Why? Because it contained a lot of the vegetables that a lot of them are acquired tastes, like, for instance, the bitter melon and the okra. But then, you know, the more you eat it, the more you grow to love it. And I think that I'm definitely a convert now. That's good. Yeah. We just put everything in layers. Tomatoes and then the eggplant. The okra. The bitter melon. The snake bean. Japanese kabocha. Now the shrimp paste. So you put a few spoons full on top, pork belly slices, and then just some water. So the idea behind not stirring is just that each layer will cook perfectly and hold its shape? Yes, yes, that's right. And then finally, we cover the dish. After a few minutes, the vegetables will start to wilt a little bit, and then we shake the, the pot and then we're done. That's very easy. Very easy and very yummy. This is best eaten with rice, so yeah, Filipinos love their rice. I'm trying to look for the pork pieces. <laughs> I know. It doesn't disappoint. I'm sure not. That is really lovely. Thank you. And it's got this really nice sort of depth of flavour from the baga um. The, yeah, the shrimp paste makes a big difference. Mmm. I'm loving this. Deeply Filipino and very, very lovely. Thank you for making this for us. Oh, thank you. It's terrific. Thank you. Dennis, there's no doubt what the favourite meat of the Philippines is. It have to be pork. We use pork in just about everything. Um, pork adobo, lechon, obviously. Every cut on the pig is used. The pork ribs. We love the pork ribs in Sinigang. We love the pork belly in Sisig and the pork head as well in Sisig. Everything. So we get excited about pork. 
You'd be forgiven for thinking Filipino people eat all day, but in fact, most families only eat six times a day, so there are small breaks in between. One of the big favourite dishes is called crispy pata, marinated deep fried pork. This is not for the faint hearted. Chef Joel Ignacio has always dreamed of recreating some of his favourite Filipino dishes in Australia. His restaurant Sizzling Filo in Sydney's Lidcombe is famous for its crispy pata. Joel, you're the king of crispy pata in Sydney. Yeah. Everybody comes for it. What is it and what makes it so yummy? It's very crackling and mm. delicious. Pork hock is simmered for three hours in water with garlic, onion, star anise, salt and whole peppercorns. After boiling, the hocks are put into the fridge to chill, then scored so the oil can work its magic. Fish sauce, yeah. Fish sauce is added for flavour just before they hit the hot oil. So this is not low fat? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> you make me have a high blood pressure for that point. Oh, oh well. <laughs> a dipping sauce is made with chopped garlic, onion, raw sugar, soy sauce and vinegar. So you just dip it in. Dip. Mm. Sadly, it's wonderful. That's the crispy pata. That's fantastic. Mm. Delicious. The meat's really tender yeah. and the crispy is really crispy. Yeah. You can smell the, you smell the vinegar yeah, and the vinegar. ginger. Yeah. The Filipinos love sour flavours so much that there's said to be more descriptive words in Tagalog to cover nuances of flavour than in any other language on earth. Sour flavours from a liberal use of vinegar become mellow and almost sweet in the national dish adobo, which is adored throughout the country. Very simple, very delicious, and something that reminds you of what home is about, or granny cooking. Chef Ricky Ocampo grew up in Manila and now runs his own restaurant cafe in Sydney's Kirribilli. At home, one of his favourite recipes is his grandmother's version of adobo, using chicken. So I have about five or six tablespoons of oil in there. And it's just really a matter of browning this chicken here. This is the colouring that I would like to have on the chicken. I don't crush the garlic very much because I like those little bits, so I will leave them a little coarse. At this stage, I will salt and pepper it, and lots of pepper as well. I love the pepper taste on this dish. Now, one of the things that we always love putting in our adobo is bay leaves. Now, at this stage, when all of those flavors are actually simmering there and then cooking with the chicken, mm. I will then put my soy sauce, so it's a, a quarter of a cup. Right. And once that has simmered just for a couple of minutes, then I put in my vinegar, the actual ingredient that would give this dish its delicious character. And that's about a cup. Ricky, that's an astounding amount of vinegar that you've used there. Yes, and that makes it delicious. Does it? It does. And it just has that bite just at the back there when you actually taste the finished product because that's what makes adobo. So you can really smell that vinegar now. It's fantastic. So this is the smell of your grandmother's kitchen. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. Looks like a beautiful sauce. Mmm. Wow, it's sweet and sour, isn't it? It's, I've got you right here. Yes. Okay, so let's just cover that just for a few minutes to get all those flavors sealed into the piece of chicken. Okay, so that's just about wow. ready. And by this stage, you'll actually see that it has reduced into a nice, syrupy combination of soy, garlic and vinegar. Mm. And that's my grandmother's adobo. Divine. In the Philippines, no family event is celebrated without a feast. And no feast is ever really complete without the delicious smell of lechon, 
roast pork stuffed with lemongrass and spices. It's a labour of love, but so worth waiting for. Dennis, tell me about lechon and why it's so loved. Uh, lechon is one of those things that um, we cook only on special occasions, so it's not an everyday thing, so this is a very special event for us. Dennis Leslie's friend Andrew Tomogan is starting up a business roasting lechon with all the spices, just as it would be done back home. So how long will this take to cook? Um, a pig this size, which is about 18 kilos, would take about four, four and a half hours. Wow, and by halfway through, your cooking smells would be spectacular. Oh, I mean, the neighbours would be going wild. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wonderful brush, Dennis. <laughs> yeah, made out of banana leaves. So, so brushed with it. oil and soy? Soy sauce, yeah. So it's got soy in the middle for flavour as well, and then it's soy for basting, for mm. colour. A little banana leaf carrier. You need to put it on the side. It smells that, just beautiful. This is the yummy bit. Is it? Oh, thank you. Oh, how soft is it? It's extraordinary. It smells awesome. Mm. That's absolutely wonderful. On Sydney's northern beaches is a little Filipino outpost, La Mesa Restaurant, the dream of Raquel and Ray San Juan who wanted to create a home away from home for expats and be able to introduce their cuisine to the wider community. Sundays are when the Filipino families love to go out for lunch, and one of the favourite dishes is a rich beef stew in peanut sauce called kare kare. The reason why it's so popular is because it's so tasty with the peanut sauce. Just pour water. Oxtail cooked to unctuous perfection is the basis of kare kare, along with tripe, which are boiled for a minimum of three hours. Yes, yeah, see, it's very tender now. Away from the bone. Yeah, the Raquel then fries garlic and onion and adds the tender oxtail and tripe, along with large chunks of eggplant. All at the same time. Pumpkin and snake beans. Uh, she pours over the broth from the meat and a spoonful of bagawong to add a depth of flavour. This is mixed through and a teaspoon of powdered anato added for colour. When the vegetables are tender, Raquel stirs through a generous spoonful of peanut butter. Oh, it really thickens up, yes, doesn't it? It's yes. fantastic. And what we'll do is just for the last touch, we'll put bok choy. So this is the smell in your restaurant all the time. Yeah. This is what you make all the time. Especially when the when Filipinos uh, arrive. You can turn it off now. I'll turn off the, the heat. Oh, and we're ready to have our lunch. Good. <laughs> so Do you like it? melting. So you put the bag yes, on top. Yes, that's it. There's no better example of the Chinese influence on Filipino food than noodles. They're known collectively as pancit and each town, region and province has its own version. For Dennis Leslie, the noodle dish for family celebration is called pancit palabok. Using rice noodles, which are soaked in cold water and then boiled for five minutes and drained. In here, we've got a little bit of garlic, carrots, onions, and also some celery, oh. and just cook that through until it's a little bit translucent. And what I've done here is um, roasted some prawn shells off, a bit of prawn heads as well. And this will be the basis of the sauce. And what we'll do is we'll give them a crush as well, so that it just releases a little bit more flavor, cover it with some water, and then let that go and develop its flavor for about 20 minutes. This is anato seeds, or the Filipinos like to call it um, achuete. Um, this will add a little bit more of that intense orange um, colour to it. Well, we'll just strain all of that. Look at that colour. We're just going to thicken it with a, a cornstarch slurry, which is just cornstarch mixed with water. Oh, that's lovely and syrupy, isn't yeah. it? The next step is um, the crumbs for it. 
One of the delicious textures is a rough crumble made with deep fried pork rind or chicharron, which is processed to crunchy, coarse crumbs. Dennis processes smoked fish fillets to create the same effect. He then sautés onion and garlic and adds the crumbs, which will be mixed through the dish. So this itself, it's is the smell of palabok. So every so time a bit I of smell, pork, bit of smoky yeah, fish. Um, every time I smell this, I know what I'm going to have. Finally, calamari and baby squid is stir fried with prawns and mussels. You can see why I thought when I was a kid, like this was a marinara. Yeah, very <laughs> much. So we'll just put that there. We're up to the final stage, but I like to sort of get the noodles into the sauce, toss through and then put all the good bits on top. Just a little bit of that crumb through there now. So this is the fun bit. A little bit of this sauce on top. A little bit of that lovely chicharron and smoked fish on top of that. And then you can make this look as pretty as you like. Some boiled eggs. So this is the traditional Filipino serving with the eggs? It's got to have eggs. And then spring onions. So a little bit of sauce just for good measure. And garnished with calamansi. And there's your palabok. That looks very, very delicious. <laughs> Let's see if it's as you good as pull. my auntie's. <laughs> I'm sure it's as good as your auntie's. <laughs> You have to love a cuisine with sweets as wild and colourful as any Mardi Gras costume. There's nothing muted in flavour either. The big favourite flavours, pandan, coconut and yam. Oma, what's the number one seller here? Uh, the ube one. Ube cake? Yeah, yeah, ube cake, yeah. So that's flavoured with a purple yam? Yeah, purple yam. And... Every day, makono. The uh, preserved and, uh, coconut? The cream, yeah. Very good. Like Colour is also one of the attractions of halo halo, from the Tagalog word meaning mix. In this case, a mix of sweet textures and flavours using shaved ice and topped with evaporated milk. Food and travel writer Yasmin Newman is obsessed with desserts, particularly halo halo, which she grew up with, learning all the secrets from her Filipino mother and enjoying regular visits to her extended family in the Philippines. I actually think this looks like a little kid's toy, but it's not at all. It's a little bit dangerous because it's got very sharp blades, but this is how you get your ice super fine. Um, otherwise... So frothy and snowy. Yeah, like mm. snowflakes. Mm. She starts by making what's called a leche flan or cream caramel. Half a cup of sugar in a non-stick saucepan is cooked to a rich dark caramel and poured into a pan. She then mixes six eggs with a can of evaporated milk and a can of condensed milk. These are beaten together and poured onto the caramel, covered with foil and cooked in a bain-marie at 180 degrees for an hour. Then it's ready to assemble. So that's a really nice, firm flan. Yep, so it won't kind of dissolve over the top. You just cut it into strips. So makapuno is basically a coconut variety that the flesh fills all the way to the center, about two tablespoons. A sugar syrup is made by cooking half a cup of brown sugar with half a cup of water. And about two teaspoons. That also kind of gives it a nice golden colour. Mm. Sugar bananas are cut into cubes to cook in a white sugar syrup for a few minutes. So about two tablespoons of that. And you'll see that there's lots of kind of different types of sugar syrup going in here, which adds to the sweetness. Yeah, this is not diet food. <laughs> Nothing in the Philippines is. <laughs> and the shaved ice. That's really light and frothy looking. Now, my mum says it's really important to use the evaporated milk because it has kind of more body to it. It has a different mm. flavour, but mm. it's also about the kind of the consistency. It's creamy. It's, it's very creamy. creamy. Let's pour it over the top. And then we'll put the leche flan on top of it. Now, is it a drink? It is a drink. 
a chunky drink. A, a chunky, chunky drink. drink. <laughs> I suppose it's, it's it, you know, it straddles a dessert yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. drink. But it's something that they have every day. It's like their coffee fix. Oh, that's great. Well, like, that's enough sugar to lift you off. <laughs> yeah. Not ready for the peanut, that's just to get wow. me through the morning. <laughs> so you want to go down to the bottom and make sure you mix all the ingredients in nicely. I've been dying to try this now. You've got to try and get a little bit of everything in the one spoon. That's Ooh, right. Ooh, leche flan. <laughs> what do you think? It's fun. It's oh, beautifully creamy and mm. cold and mm. That's great. Normally you have your own, don't you? Mm, mm. you want a whole one. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have a whole one? There you go. It's all yours. <laughs> I'll make another. <laughs> On our next food safari, South African food and the many flavours and dishes from the Rainbow Nation, from biltong to a braai, the best street food to poikikos.